Some are forced to leave behind their beloved pets since many shelters don't allow them. And that has actually kept people from evacuating in some instances. TJ Del Santo looked into what pet owners here in southern New England need to know just in case they ever have to evacuate. He continues our in-depth coverage now with what he's learned. Since Hurricane Katrina, legislation has been created to help keep pets safe in the event of an evacuation. And at the same time, it's meant to keep pet owners safe. Pets are a part of the family, and in years past, people stayed in evacuation zones because they couldn't take their furry friends. 44% in Louisiana did refuse to evacuate because they could not take their pets with them. Following Katrina, the Pet Evacuation and Transportation Standards Act was passed in 2006, which ensures that state and local emergency preparedness plans address the needs of individuals with pets prior to, during, and following a major disaster. Still, people found it difficult to get out of Florida on an airplane with pets ahead of Irma. Come to find out, there weren't enough pet carrier transport ca carriers for these pets to be put in to go away. The director of the Rhode Island SPCA, E.J. Finocchio, said preparation is important. They should have their carrier and they should have identification. Hopefully they will have microchip identification. Red Cross shelters will not allow pets other than service animals, so it is important to call a shelter ahead of time to find out their pet policy. There are four designated emergency pet shelters in the state, the Pawtucket, South Kingstown, and Westerly Animal Shelters, as well as the Potter League in Middletown. Finocchio said that he would also have the Rhode Island SPCA open for animals. And if you'd like more information about how to keep your pets safe ahead of, during, and after a hurricane, you can log on to our website at WPRI.com. With the East Bay Mobile Newsroom, I'm TJ Del Santo, Eyewitness News.